Welcome to Capture the World with D. Interviews with companies and individuals to learn more about digitally capturing the built world. Video, drone, 3D tours, pictures, panoramas, and more. And now your host, a social influencer and community activist, D. Johnson. Welcome to Capture the World with Dee. I'm your host, Dee Johnson. Today's episode is being sponsored by Cubicasa, the makers of a revolutionary app that allows you to use your mobile device to capture a space in under five minutes and in one business day, get a professional floor plan. If you haven't checked them out yet, go to cubi.casa, that's C-U-B-I dot C-A-S-A, and check them out. Remember, your first scan is always free, so try it. You'll love it. My guest today is the owner and creator of Real Estate Photography Pro, a course designed to take you from zero experience to a seasoned real estate photographer pro, photographer in no time at all. It's a great system, and it's he, my guest is so enjoyable to listen to and uplifting. So without further ado, please help me welcome Eli Jones. Hi, Eli. Thanks for joining me today. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm good. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thanks. So you are the creator of this genius program <laughs> called Real Estate Photography Pro. You are such an uplifting speaker, and I think that what you've created is, uh, I mean, it, it inspired me to think about doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been, been fun for sure. Yeah, so let's start out by having you tell us a little bit about your background and where all this began. Yeah, absolutely. So um, to me, the real estate photographer pro side of the business is actually pretty new. We only launched the course uh, last November, so uh, just a little over six months ago now. But um, for the past, I guess, six, almost seven years now, I've been a real estate photographer myself and I've grown a real estate photography company. Um, I started the business when I was younger. I was 16. And since then, we've grown it from just myself to about a year later, adding my brother to the team and changing the company name to Norman and Young, which is what you see on the wall behind me, which is both of our middle names. And then from there, we've grown the company to the now, I think 17 employees we have. And so we've had a ton of fun doing it. And Real Estate Photographer Pro actually really came as first an internal training tool. You know, as we started to grow our business, we noticed that, you know, what we did at shoots wasn't always what was happening when we hired new people and had them go to shoots. And so we wanted a way where we could at least have a set of guidelines and training that new employees would know what they're supposed to be doing. So that's how the course started at a baseline. And then from there, we, we started thinking, you know, there's a, we serve only the DFW market. There's a ton of other markets out there. We get a lot of questions about how we do stuff. I'd see a ton of bad advice out there on how other people were recommending stuff be done, stuff that was, you know, opposite of what I would recommend. And so like, you know, there's a great opportunity to help a bunch of other people in other markets, but also have a great another business unit for us here at Norman & Young. So that's kind of the uh, two minute story for you. Yeah, absolutely. That's terrific. So you started as a young sort of innocent 16 year old <laughs> and grew something and that's commendable in and of itself. So tell us more about this course. Yeah. So uh, my goal with it, like I said, was originally uh, kind of an in-house training program, but um, that obviously wouldn't be enough itself for someone to start and grow the business. So we took the internal training part, which of course teaches you how to shoot and edit and our customer service tips and stuff like that, but also adds a bunch of uh, business knowledge on the, the side as well. And one thing that I think, and it's one of my you know biggest principles and what I try to get across in the course is the thing that either keeps a lot of photographers from ever getting any traction and getting started or keeps photographers that are kind of busy from getting to the point where they can scale like we did, hire more people, is that they put way, way too much effort on the photo and quality side of things and they don't nearly invest enough of their time or you know time learning on the business side of things. And so my big belief is that the business side, and what I mean by that is everything from uh, you know your more boring stuff to me at least, like accounting and all the procedures you need to have in place to what I think is the more fun stuff, which is how you treat customers, the systems you put in place to make customers love working with you and a bunch of that. So not only in the course do we teach how to actually shoot photos and videos and of course floor plans with QB Casa, we actually show you how to get the business in the first place, how to keep those clients happy and a bunch of other stuff. So summed up, it's about 
uh, 75 video lectures. It's about an eight hour course overall. And then we also have a private Facebook group for the course. And so it's our way of kind of as much as possible imparting the knowledge we've learned along the way into videos that are easily digestible and can be replicated by somebody else. Yeah. So you have to be a jack of all trades if you go into business for yourself, because I've seen so many people who are great photographers, but can't sell. Right. Yeah. And that's that's often the thing. And even to me, I do not consider myself a good salesman. In fact, I hate the process of selling as mm -hmm. most people think of it. So I'm not the guy that's, you know, going into the brokerage and giving these amazing presentations and getting all the clients. That's actually not my strategy because it's really stressful for me to do that, mm -hmm. especially when I was first starting the business and I was younger that just just didn't really work out well. I, people would look at me like, oh, what's this kid doing in here? You know, <laughs> so we kind of came up with some other strategies, but I actually do. Uh, kind of a quick strategy that you guys can actually use watching this is we teach our cold Instagram direct messages are one of the best ways you can start getting customers. And we actually just recommend jumping on Instagram, finding real estate agents in your area. If you are wanting to be a real estate photographer and sending them a message that something, you know, Hey, I'm blank. I'd love to give you a free first shoot. And that's kind of our secret weapon for growing businesses. So um, yeah, not a lot of selling that I do. We just kind of outreach in that way. And it works mm -hmm. really, really well, especially if you're like me and don't really want to be selling people. Yeah, me too. I'm the worst salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so different ways of reaching people, letting them know you exist, um, having them try you for free the first time. Um, and that's why you have to have your, your service and your processes in place, because yeah. if they try you the first time and you're hard to work with and the photos yeah. don't come back forever and there's just a bunch of other stuff that's not great, that free shoot is going to be wasted. So before you can do that, you really have to get your processes down and make working with you. Uh, we, we always talk about, you know, people just ramble on about customer service. What we try to talk about is more of the client experience side. So what does a client feel like when they're using you? What's the benefits they get experientially using you? And that's what we try to focus on. Right. And what makes you different from everybody else, right? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we focus on, too, is because a lot of photographers and photography companies aren't focusing on that. They're all just, oh, my photos are the best. I do yeah. this process. Nobody cares about that. They care about how you made them feel when you worked with them, how fast you were at turning around a bunch of other stuff. So that's what we focus on. All right. So this program can be basically you, you don't have to have any experience, right? You can just. Yeah. And that was the, originally I thought that it was going to be a program mostly utilized by existing real estate photographers. And there are a bunch of people who already you know, shot real estate that joined. But what we've seen, and I understand this, is there's a lot of pride within the real estate photography community where they're thinking, oh, I don't really need to get a course. I know what I'm doing. They could be benefited by the course, but it's harder to sell them. So we've included everything for those people that haven't even touched a camera ever in their life to be able to go through the course still, because that's actually become our biggest market. Mm hmm. Yeah, like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but I watched the the webinar that you did, and after I watched that, it was like you know I could do this. Yeah, and that was my goal. You know, a lot of webinars, especially online webinars, it's awful. You go through a forty five minute sales pitch. You maybe get a little motivated, but you don't learn anything, and they just really want you to buy it. So when we put like I'm going to take you know some of our best content from the course, put it in there. That way, if someone watches it and don't buy and doesn't buy, regardless of whether it's because they're not interested or they don't have the money, at least they got something out of it. And so I try to put a bunch of stuff in there, including the Instagram strategy that we kind of talked about. That, yeah. You know, helps people actually get something out of it. Yeah. It's something that I never would have thought of. It's a different, yeah. it's a different technique that you thought of that you're willing to share, which is great. And most people don't use it, which is why it's so effective. You know, everybody gets, you know, cold email and cold calls yeah. to death. Yeah. You can start the relationship well that way. Yeah. So we will put the link to that webinar so you can watch it if you're interested. It's 45 minutes. It's full of good information. Uh, it's very uplifting. Um, all right. So I have a question for you. Go for it. So does your program work in an area where there are a lot of real estate brokerage firms that are already connected to big photography companies? So for example, the question I walked away with was, I live in the Bay Area, right? Yeah. Is, will this program work for me because how will I compete with the other big photography companies? You guys have been doing it forever. So yeah. there's two uh, questions that I get more than any questions from people who haven't joined yet. It's one, nobody in my area uses real estate photographers. It's all cell phone photos. Are they ever going to hire me? And two, which is this question you just posed, there's 800 other companies in the area. They've been doing this so much longer than me. How am I actually that someone that's just starting going to have a chance to break in. And really the answer to the second question is 
it's actually good news if you see a lot of competitors. And it tells you a couple of things. One, it tells you that people are spending money on real estate photography and they're spending enough money consistently enough to allow these companies to grow large. But the fortunate thing is it's way easier to compete with a larger company than it is to compete with you know, an individual. And here's kind of how I put that into the context of our story. When we first started, the area that I started my business in had no existing photographers, but it was a tiny town, 35,000 people is what it technically is. Um, that was enough to grow my business to like one or two photographers besides myself. But the challenge we had, or what I thought the challenge we'd have was when we moved into the area we are now, which is the larger Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, there's a couple of pretty big companies and one that's like multi-state, huge company. And so I'm thinking, okay, why, why are people going to use us? I wonder if we're going to have trouble breaking in. And what I found is that, and a lot of people know this, the bigger a company gets, typically, if it's not run by people who believe that customer service is important, the customer service just goes way downhill. And that's why so many photographers that get started and try to compete with companies on the basis of photo quality fail because they're going head to head with the company that has their processes down for photos. They make good quality photos. They have buying power to be able to negotiate great editing at cheap rates. So you can't compete with them on photos. Mm -hmm. What you can compete with them on is customer service. So what we saw was there was a couple of complaints that were coming from this larger company. One was the agents never knew what they were going to pay because there was a ton of hidden fees. Um, the second thing was the photographers, they didn't really like working with them. They weren't very accommodating. They really didn't care for the agent. And it actually reflected on some of the, um, if you go to like Glassdoor, a site where you can review employers, there was a bunch of people saying, oh, management's too soft on the agents. You know, they're never going to go anywhere else. We just need to be more strict with our clients. That's like the worst strategy ever. <laughs> and, you know, that's coming from the people who are actually shooting for the agents. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, you know, I know people are going to be irritated at this customer service. And I know for a fact they're irritated at this pricing structure. Yeah. So let me compete on that. So we tried to have the best customer service in the industry, meaning we're the most accommodating. We on site do anything we can that we think would be helpful to the agent. We're always on time. We have simple pricing. And most of our client base today, the over a thousand clients we have are clients that used to be clients of that business. And so that just shows that you really can compete. You just don't want to compete where it doesn't matter. You know, agents don't care at a certain level about photo quality. If your photos are 5% better, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna win the business. You have to win the business on the experience side to actually be able to compete in a way that's gonna cause you to have significant, uh, in a good way, business results. That is so true. You don't know how many times I've sat with photographers and they're going on and on about, well, the angle on this is wrong or, and they're all like laughing because some window is blown out and I'm thinking, yeah. I it's like that picture. There's like a lot of pride within the <laughs> photography community. I understand it. Like everybody in the community is telling each other that we're photographers and photos are what count, but it's, it's just not, you know, you have to look mm -hmm. at the other aspects of the business because those are what's actually going to help. And so it, it's fortunate for those of us that get it because we have a much easier time competing. And yeah. all these other guys are beating each other up and beating themselves up, uh, spending way more time editing, way more money, yeah. trying to get these, this photo quality to some arbitrary level they think is going to bring them more business but it never does and then they wonder it's like you know if you go in those forums and not to just bash on those people but you see people that are basically like you know they're amazing photographers and they're still feeling like they need to get better and that business is going to come when they get better but it never does you know there's people that are most of the people in that group are in those groups are way better photographers than myself but it doesn't matter it's mm -hmm. all about the business side of things that's yeah just take note from me the person who knows nothing about photography, I don't see the difference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially the sellers or the people buying houses don't because they're looking at they it. They don't. Like, where it's this big. It like, you know. like I'm the average person and I'm telling you right sure. now, I sit yeah. in these, these discussions and I'm thinking something's wrong with me because I have no clue why you think that's a bad picture. I love that picture. <laughs> it's kind of discouraging to new photographers that are like, I'm never going to get my product there. I'm never going to be able to make it. And it's like, that's not what it takes to make it. You know, yeah. not that at all. That is so true. I mean, I know a lot, um, some young people who just got a camera, went out, started taking pictures and they, they show their customers that they care. Right. Yeah. And so I mean, that was business... literally me. I had no camera experience. I didn't, I obviously wasn't even yeah. at college age to be able to have gone to school for that. And it was much more about, and I think that's actually my advantage was that I wasn't in those Facebook groups being told how to do it. I didn't go to school that told me this is how you do it. I just kind of figured out what actually worked for me. And my metric was whether I was getting her, you know, more clients or not. And so that was a really like, 
I guess, pure way to do it because nobody else was telling me how to do it. I just kind of had to figure it out. Yeah, but you were smart and, you know, listen to somebody who's done it and who's been successful, right? Mm -hmm. uh, use the knowledge that he gained. This is uh, really important and it's a really good thing that you've decided to put all this down into these videos and it's it's a lot of work, I know. Um, a lot of work. It's been a lot of fun. I was not, I just wasn't, we have so like the Facebook group side of our um, course is obviously something members get access to. And my goal with that was to have it be kind of like, uh oh, uh oh, I lost Eli. Okay, don't worry, we'll get him back. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, I'm just contacting him. He must have lost his connection. Let's see if we can get him back here. Because we were having actually a really good discussion. Oh, Eli, where are you? Anyway, in the meantime, while we wait for him, <laughs> thanks everyone for joining. Um, yeah, so Eli's program is actually... Um, it's inspiring. It's a way if you are looking for something new, if you are already a photographer, it's a way to um, get tips on things that maybe you could make better. It's always hard when you have your own company and you're the person doing all the work to be skilled in all the different areas that you need. You have to be a good salesperson, marketing, finance, um, you know, making sure all the books are right doing the photography, having good customer service. Uh, it's, it's hard and his course gives you tips on how to make that easier, how to make it all work, how to scale. There's a big difference between I'm the photographer and I'm doing everything to, wow, I'm overwhelmed and now I have to start hiring people. How do you manage that? Uh, that's, that's not easy. Um, so it's, it's a really good course. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, we will set, put the link to the webinar down below. Uh, check it out. It's, it's 45 minutes, which is a little bit long, but he, but he does give actually some information in that webinar that you could probably use. So it's definitely worth your time to listen to it. Uh, all right, well, let's see. We're still trying to get him back here. <laughs> Where did he go? I'm, I'm wondering if he's having problems with his. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's having technical difficulties. He's working on it. He'll be with us shortly. Um, and while we're waiting to shameless plug to QB Casa, uh, recently we've uh, had a big increase in interest in our product. We've gotten a lot of great feedback. Thanks you to everybody who's reached out and told us how much they love the app. It's super easy to use. It takes, they'd say five minutes. I haven't done a house in over three minutes, but I, I go fast. Um, and you get an amazing result. It's, um, it's inexpensive. It's something that you can offer with very little effort to your clients. It's an easy add-on. So if you're on site, you'd be like, hey, you know, I'm taking these pictures for you, but don't you think people want to know like the picture of this bathroom, like where it is in relation to the other rooms in the house? I can give you this floor plan which will give your customers that sort of overview of the flow of the house, the layout. Uh, it really helps people understand. Uh, recently, um, we put my father-in-law's house on the market and there were these pictures and I'm like, I have no clue where these pictures were taken. And when we looked at the floor plan of the home, you know, my husband could point here, this picture was taken right here. It was like, oh, now I get it. I understand this home a lot better. Uh, so it's something that uh, we're seeing definitely more interest in. Uh, if you want more information, go to cubi.casa, that's C-U-B-I dot C-A-S-A. Um, and you, sh you should be able to sign up and try your first scan for free. Um, we have great customer support. Uh, so if you need help, reach out to help at cubicasa.com. 
uh, and we are there for you. We want to hear from you. We want your feedback. Uh, we really actually do care. So, um, and we've got some big companies joining us now, which I'm sure we will be announcing shortly. So there's a lot of exciting things going on in the company right now. Okay, <laughs> where is Eli? <clears throat> Oh, there we go. Hello. Oh, you so can hear me now? I can. What happened? You, think, you know, you think for a tech company, we'd remember to plug in our computers, but right now it's uh, dead in front of me, so we're joining the old-fashioned way. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no problem. I was just here, like, talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, I was saying it was more awkward for you than me, I'm sure, because I, I didn't have to sit there and try to make conversation. Anyway, here we are. Yeah. All right. So where were we? <laughs> you know, I don't even remember that. So make it even more awkward. How about that? <laughs> all right. So let's talk about how you sign up for this class. Sure. So um, the best way and what I encourage people to do is go through the webinar that you'll post that link for. Mm -hmm. um, not only if you go through that webinar, will you get a discount at the end of the webinar off full price? But also I like people to have gone through the webinar because it gives you an idea before you even buy if it's going to be right for you. And I obviously don't want um, people in the course who are just going to end up returning it. So I'd rather you get through it. And um, to talk about the return for a second, you know, my goal with the course is not to have anybody get stuck in something they paid for, but they're never going to use. And so because of that, we offer a 30 day return policy that even if you completed the course, you can return it. And most people don't because by the time they get through the course, they realize a couple of things. They're like, one, this was really great. I don't want to return it. Uh, but two, it's really a resource guide that you're going to refer back to as you build your business. So it's not a one and done thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the best way I would say is go through that webinar. There'll be a link at the end with the discount. Um, and again, you have that 30 day trial period at the start. So feel free to try it out. Cool. And what is the format? So it's hosted through a company called Teachable, which a lot of people are probably familiar with, um, but it's all online. You don't have to download anything, which uh, one, helps protect us from the uh, droves of internet pirates that are out there wanting to steal content, but two, and more importantly, it makes it so you can actually access it on any device. So if you're on your phone and you want to watch a video on site because you forgot about something, you're good to go. If you want to watch it you know, on your TV at home that can pull up a website, go for it there. And so it can be accessed anywhere because it's all hosted online. All right. So what what happens after you purchase the course and you want like help? Like you mentioned your Facebook yeah. group. Yep. So uh, there's a lot of courses out there where you buy the course and then you just never hear from anybody again. If you have a question, you get stuck, you don't hear from anybody. I didn't want to do that because I wanted people to actually be able to get through the material. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing we did, and this is like uh, the first line of defense, if you will, from not getting stuck, and that's the Facebook group. So all of our members are in there. There's over a thousand people in there. We've been really lucky where people have been really heavily engaging in the group, meaning if you post something, someone is going to answer it. And the person who answers it is going to have gone through the course, meaning it's most of the time going to be a great answer. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I know the Facebook group isn't the end all be all. Some people still have questions or, you know, really specific. I can't get the presets installed questions. So um, what we also give students access to is my email address for the course. So if you have a question that isn't solved by the Facebook group, students have the ability to reach me. Uh, which I think is important because if they do get fully stuck, I want to be able to help them. And so either someone on my team here, uh, Micah, who is involved with uh, the course and is on my team, is helpful with a lot of the tech qu questions. And then anything else pretty much comes my way. So one way or another, we'll get you taken care of. That's awesome. So knowing that you have support there is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So can I join the Facebook group if I haven't purchased the course? We reserve it for members only. And that's one thing we wanted to do to keep it valuable for the members. And the goal was that if you haven't gone through the course, there's going to be a ton of repetitive starting level questions the course would have answered. And so we wanted the group to be for members. That way they actually know, um, you know, it's not just getting flooded with entry level questions. It's questions from people who are all coming from the same background because they've taken the course, which I think makes it uh, very beneficial. Yeah. So that's another benefit of signing up for the class. Yeah. Cool. So... Um, so you said you have over a thousand members in the yeah. group already? Yep. We're at, uh, I think like close to 1100 or so. Wow. So you've grown pretty quickly and the interest in this yeah. course has been pretty good. Yeah. A lot faster than I expected it to be, to be uh, frank with you. 
Well, you're a good salesperson, so I, and, and, <laughs> well, thank you. And I think a lot of having a successful photography business is being able to sell, right? Yeah. Some of the best photographers will walk into a room and within five minutes, they've said hi to everybody, right? They're personable. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The photographers that just sit in the back corner and don't have that personal connection with other people, they sure. they struggle more with creating a business. Yeah. And, and that's what actually I kind of like about real estate photography compared to other types. So, um, you know, in situations like this one-on-one, -on -one, I like to talk to people, but I'm not the guy who loves going to, you know, a, like when I get invited to those like brokerage galas and stuff like mm -hmm. that, I am not at all comfortable there. I don't like that. I don't like to go have to make small talk. So it's not something that's required, but what is required is to understand a, a little bit about how people work and be able to help them uh, get what they want in a situation. And that's what I like about real estate. You're not, you yes. don't have to walk into a big room of people and sell. You just have to know that if you're meeting with Sarah, the real estate agent, you need to be able to figure out what Sarah wants, make great conversation with Sarah, make sure Sarah has a great experience and that's ultimately going to carry you. So some people like not myself at all, but some people, you know, they're just, they go into a big room of people and they make all kinds of friends. That's not me, but I do like talking to people one-on-one -on -one, and I think that's ah, important. For this. Okay. So that works as well. So I think the key yeah. of what you're saying here is figure out what they need, not what you yeah. think they need. Yeah, and exactly. A, <laughs> and a Those great exact words, actually. Well, no, it's true because the great example is yeah. my kids were growing up. I'd be like, what do you want to buy your friend for their birthday? And they'd be like, I want to buy him buy this want. toy. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 that's what you want. <laughs> it's not about yeah. that. It's about what do you think they want? And that concept exactly. is really hard, right? It is. It's even harder when it's uh, – you start to look at seven and when other people are telling you that's how it works all you know <laughs> tons of other photographers will tell you you need this you need this you need this you got to buy this it's not true at all and so it's much more about just seeing what the client actually cares about and trying to reverse engineer a company from that how true is that absolutely so let's talk about customer service how important is that yeah. i mean it's it's everything but not in the way normally uh, we associate with it i always kind of make the joke when i say customer service i'm not talking about at&t wait on hold customer service uh, and that's why we use the word customer experience more than service because we want them to you know every step of the process have an experience they would regard as pleasant you know quick um, no, nothing in any kind of negative way. And so uh, that's not just when you're there on site. That's how your systems work when they book. Is it complicated to book? Can they get mm. a, hold, a hold of somebody on the phone that doesn't sound like, you know, they're having the worst day ever <laughs> uh, when the photographer gets there? Are they on time? Uh, are they well dressed? Or do they make, you know, they take the time to talk to your sellers and explain to them what's going on. So there's every, you know, stage of the process has to be looked at with the same kind of scrutiny to make sure uh, that it, it delivers a great experience. And what other photographers do is the only stage they worry about is the stage when the client opens the email and looks at the photos. That's so unimportant compared to the hundred other stages you have to kind of have the client go through. And that if they don't like those other stages, by the time they get to the photos, they're not going to like the photos either. Yeah, true. So how do you feel about if a photographer shows up at a house and it's just a, it's just a hot mess? <laughs> yeah. So uh, what we do here is it's a case by case basis. Sometimes the maybe the sellers are going through a hard time. Maybe it's tenants they couldn't control, um, and the agent wants to shoot it. Let's shoot it. We'll, we'll make you know the best we can. Our our kind of uh, idea is that we spend 15 minutes doing what we can to make it look as good as possible, but we can't clean from floor to ceiling. So if the agent wants to go, we'll go for it. But another thing we do is sometimes the agent's blindsided. They show up with you. Maybe it's the first time they've been in the house in a while. You guys walk in the door and it's a dump in there uh -huh. and the agent obviously probably doesn't want to shoot it. And so um, what we do again to make that customer experience as good as possible is not ever be like, oh, no. I mean, we're never going to make a scene that it's not ready. We'll not try to shoot it if they don't want to. We'll say that's totally fine. We'll come back. And where we do it a little differently than a lot of other photographers is we don't charge them if that happens. We just push the shoot in our calendar and drive right back. No, uh, no yeah. charge for showing up or anything like that. And that goes a long way to yes. build goodwill with your clients. And that's something we talk about a lot is, um, you know, dollars don't matter. Uh, if, if you focus on dollars, your business won't get anywhere. You yes. have to focus on goodwill and a bunch of other stuff. And then the dollars come. So yeah, we never charge fees for anything like that. And that's a big um, way you can actually apply having a good customer service philosophy. And that is not to charge when you have stuff like that that's out of their control. Yeah. So to be willing to do that, to be willing to just pick up a little bit, 15 minutes, like you said, um, yep. and to be flexible that way. Um, if it's, if it's happening a lot, build that cost into your, 
business. Build it into your price. Don't charge them extra. Like, don't yeah. charge them, you know, a tacked on rate. That just irritates <laughs> yes. people. Yes. Nickel and diming people with, yeah. with added costs yeah. is the quickest way to make somebody it's not happy not with you. <laughs> So yeah, so account for that, be business smart. So your class also talks about business and how to run the business, right? Yep, about 50% of the class is talking about, you know, kind of the stuff we've been talking about just way more in depth, how to actually do it. And then 50% yep. is actually, you know, you can have the greatest business and the greatest customer service, but if your photos are actually terrible, you're not gonna get anywhere either. So half the course is actually teaching you how to get photos that your agents are gonna like. It's, it's amazing though, how many, how, how bad a photo can be and still be acceptable. Because yeah, it's really, it's something that we kind of uh, think is kind of funny here, actually. We'll occasionally um, say our, our team delivers photos and then we get a call from the agent that says, hey, I didn't really like these photos. Could you give me a call back? But no information. So we'll obviously look at the photos first and start to see what we think is wrong. That way, when we talk to them, we can be like, we saw this, we saw this. So Mark, um, who's the CEO of Norman and Young and I, will start looking at them. We'll be like, oh, you know, the color's off in this room and uh, this one's way too dark and this one's way too bright. And we're like, oh, I know exactly what they're saying. We jump on the call with the agent and they're like, there was a hole in the wall there. They didn't sweep the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, there's a <laughs> by the back door. They don't even mention the color or anything. Because they, they don't see it. Don't exactly. I don't see that. It's like people, yeah, exactly. it's like photographers that's out why there. we're so big on, you know, spending <laughs> yeah. that time to move stuff because yeah. that's what the agents are going to see. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to Photoshop stuff all day. So yeah. I'd rather just move it on site. Yeah. So I've heard that photography for real estate is different than photography for like portraits, weddings, right? It's. Yeah. So it's a lot, um, and I'll even go a step further than that. A lot of people think, you know, uh, real estate for architecture and commercial and, and real estate is all the same. It's completely, real estate is separate from architecture and architecture is separate from commercial and real estate. So what we focus on is real estate. What our principles, most of them work on is real estate. Obviously customer service works anywhere, yeah. but specifically we're talking about real estate. If you start working with, you know, higher end architects and developers and stuff like that, they are going to want to pay more for an extra 5% photo quality or an extra 20%, yeah. but agents aren't. And so that's why we're really laser focused on specifically the real estate portion. Um, and then other types, I mean, weddings and portraits, they're not even the same game as real estate. So it's so unrelated. What scares me about weddings is you get one shot, right? It happens. Yeah, and if you miss like it, it's like pressure. real estate that's is not... more, um, I've heard more technical. It's not as artsy, yeah. right? Well, it's process oriented versus uh, style oriented, yeah. meaning once you figure out how to shoot real estate, you do the same exact thing every single house you go to without really any changes. With a wedding, you know, you're working with the location you're given and the lighting of that time and a bunch of other stuff that, uh, you know, for it just isn't a factor in real estate. You shoot almost the same every single time you go to a house, which, you know, the businessman in me really likes because it's easier to train people. It's not as hard when you're on site. You don't have to be using your brain as much. You can focus on the clients and making conversation with them instead of, you know, trying to think about what you should do to solve something creatively. Yeah. Yeah. You're obviously a good businessman. Okay. My last question for you. Go for it. Eli, what is your special sauce? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even know how to answer that. I think uh, it's not worrying about the photos at all. It's just all, if the customer's happy, uh, your business is going to be happy and, and then your finances uh, in the next line of things. So yeah, I mean, just focus everything on the customer and what they yeah. actually need and nothing on what you think they need that um, they're not seeming to need. Yeah. Well, you're a great example. You're a big success story. Um, if you watch the webinar, he talks about how he got started. Uh, it's it's a great story. It makes me proud of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's fun for sure. A lot um, of work, but a lot of fun. Well, it also brings credibility to what you say because you've actually done it and it worked. I mean, look at you today. Look at where you are right now. I mean, it's crazy. You're you run a company, Norman and Young, and how many? You have seventeen. I think people? we just hired a bunch. I think seventeen is what we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Sixteen or seventeen. And, and it's a lot harder when you're on your own to go into managing a company of 17 people. <laughs> There's definitely some uh, learning curves for myself when it comes to managing. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, definitely owning a business is not all fun. And frankly, a lot of the time, there was a quote the other day, Elon Musk said, you know, owning a business is kind of like eating a light bulb and then he just leaves it at that. And <laughs> you kind of get the picture. So, uh, you know, the results can be fun, but it's a lot of work, but definitely rewarding. Yes, it is. And it's kudos to you because not a lot of people can pull off what you did. But I Thank think you. that if you do watch the course, you will get a lot of tips that will make you very successful. It, you can do it. And here's proof right here. So 
So definitely sign up for the class. We will, we will make sure we have all the links um, posted on this YouTube uh, video. Um, again, thank you so much, Eli, for taking the time out of your day to join me today and talk about your class, Real Estate, pleasure, yeah. thank Real you, Estate Photography Pro. I've learned a lot. I hope you guys have too. Um, so until next week, this has been Capture the World with D. I'll see you then. Bye.